How do you have to be cleaning house at DHS? What would you like to achieve with the new leadership? Well, I never said I'm cleaning house. I don't know who came up with that expression. We have a lot of great people over there. We have bad laws. We have a judge that just ruled incredibly uh, that he doesn't want people staying in Mexico. Uh, figure that one out. Uh, nobody can believe these decisions we're getting from the Ninth Circuit. It's a disgrace. And so we, we're fighting the bad laws, the bad, the bad things that are coming out of Congress. You have a Democrat Congress that's obstructing. You talk about obstruction, the greatest obstruction anyone's ever seen. All they have to do is spend 20 minutes and they can fix this whole problem. We have the worst laws of any country anywhere in the world, whether it's catch and release or or any one of them. I mean, I could name, I could sit here and name them, but if you did, if you got rid of catch and release, chain migration, uh, visa lottery, uh, you have to fix the asylum situation. It's ridiculous. You have people coming in claiming asylum. They're all reading exactly what the lawyer gives them. They have a piece of paper. Read what that is, and all of a sudden, you're entitled to asylum. And some of these people are not people you want in our country. So we are uh, building a lot of wall. It's getting built. Some of you saw that. Last week, when we went, uh, we had a, a great presentation of a new stretch, but we're building a lot of wall, and we're very, being very strong on the border. But we're bucking a court system that never, ever rules for us, and we're bucking really bad things with Congress, with the Democrats in Congress not willing to act. They want to have open borders, which means they want to have crime, they want to have drugs pouring into our country. They don't want to act. We have to close up the borders. We're doing it, but we're doing it — I could do it much faster if they would act. So it's, it's a terrible thing. The Democrats in Congress, what they're doing and the obstruction, they don't want to fix it. And we have to fix it. They want open borders. They want to have millions of people pouring into our country. We, we, they don't even want to know who they are. These are people coming into our country with criminal records. We have murderers coming in. We have drug lords coming in. We have gangs coming in. And we're stopping them. And if we don't stop them, ICE is throwing them the hell out. We're getting them out. But our job could be so much easier. I think Kevin is going to do a fantastic job. He's acting, but I think he's going to do a fantastic job. And we're not doing anything uh, very big uh, as far as uh, w what we need. Homeland Security, that's exactly what we want. There's no better term. There's no better name. We want Homeland Security, and that's what we're going to get. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Starting the trap separations again. Egypt's buying more fighter jets from Russia. How do you feel about that? Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you Obama separated the children, by the way. Just, just so you understand, President Obama separated the children. Those cages that were shown, I think they were very inappropriate. They were built by President Obama's administration, not by Trump. President Obama had child separation. Take a look. The press knows it. You know it. We all know it. I didn't have — I'm the one that stopped it. President Obama had child separation. Now, I'll tell you something. Once you don't have it, that's why you see many more people coming. They're coming like it's a picnic, because let's go to Disneyland. President Obama separated children. They had child separation. I was the one that changed it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're not looking to do that, no. We're not looking to do that, no. Thank you very much. But it does make — it brings a lot more people to the border. When you don't do it, it brings a lot more people to the border. We are not looking to do it. But President Obama had the law. We changed the law. And uh, I think the press should accurately report it, but of course they won't. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to be with the President. It's a great honor to be with your President. Interesting comments from the President of the United States here. Those crossed arms at the end, the body language telling you he wasn't happy with some of the tone at the end there. Uh, we're going to need a backup generator for the fact check machine for part of what the President said there, including his bit about blaming the Democrats. He's right. The President's, the Democrats now control the House. The Democrats disagree with a lot of what he wants in immigration policy. But this President walked away from a deal when the Republicans 
controlled the Congress, that would have given him a lot more funding for his border wall than he has now, would have given him some of the enforcement mechanisms that he wants now and could never get through a Democratic-controlled House. So when he keeps blaming the Democrats, now they have policy disagreements, but he walked away from a deal because he didn't want to give the Dreamers status that was just about done. That was one thing there. Um, yes, President Obama did have some family separation policies, and yes, some of those early images were from the Obama administration, but the Trump administration accelerated the family separation policy. He said, I stopped it. Uh, interesting, in the end, he said we're not interested in reinstating it. The reporting in the last 24 hours has been that they are having serious conversations about this inside the White House. Are they doing this without the president's knowledge, or was the president not telling the truth there? It is entirely possible that the president hasn't been a part of those conversations that are happening in the White House about this. But it's an, it is important that he said that on the record today, that they are not looking to do uh, to reinstate this policy of separating children from their families. What he also said is really crucial, which is that he believes that not separating children from their parents causes more people to come into the United States. That is the opposite of what the administration continues to claim, that this was not a deterrent policy. It clearly, in the president's view, is a deterrent. So I think that needs to be very clear that that's what they're saying here. And, and the president's also not correct about the idea that somehow this was something he just continued from the Obama administration. Bill Barr was on Capitol Hill today. He laid it out. He said the administration had a zero tolerance policy that referred families to the DOJ for prosecution, which caused children to be separated from their parents. That was a policy that was put in place last year by the president's attorney general. That was not the policy that existed prior to that. Right. Moment. The zero tolerance policy by Jeff Sessions amped up significantly anything that had been done before when it came to the issues of family separation. Again, it ended up in the courts, but you're right. Interesting. The president there. Now, this is fascinating to me because every president has a team of advisors who talk about things, and when they get to a critical point, they bring it to the president. We shouldn't expect the CEO of any organization to be involved in every conversation about what might happen. It's only when you get to, okay, it's decision point, you bring it to the boss. Uh, it was all over town yesterday, reported by a whole lot of people, quoting a lot of senior administration officials, saying the president, in his anger, and then he said he didn't want to call it a cleaning house. I don't know what else to call it. You fired the secretary. You fired the Secret Service director. You're probably going to have to fire the deputy director because the law says she should be boosted up. The general counsel, is the White House official says, has to go because he's part of the Nielsen team. Another official, they say, is part of the Nielsen team. He has to go. I don't know what else to call that. Uh, call it a purge. Call it a cleaning house. But is the president not looped in on what his own advisors are trying to do? I don't think we know that at this point. I, what we do know is that um, I think there was a struggle within the White House over who was going to run immigration policy. And the president has told Stephen Miller that he is in charge of immigration policy. Uh, Miller had been running a sort of smaller group of immigration hawks and trying to, uh, I think, hijack the Im immigration policy earlier on. But now he's officially in charge of immigration policy. And so that's what the president is aware of, that we know the president is aware of. On the deterrent point, which I think is an important one on child separations, I think the administration hoped this would be a deterrent. I'm not sure the policy was in effect long enough to really know whether it was or it wasn't, but while the policy was briefly in effect, um, the numbers did not decrease. So um, the president is not right when he says that, and I, I think the current counter argument would just be we didn't see it play out long enough to know whether, in fact, it would deter people from, from coming, but uh, Trump certainly can't claim that right now. And when, when this, if you've watched this, the majority leader, Mitch McConnell, going to the floor to pray, pray, praise Christian Nielsen. Um, he didn't criticize the president, but that's implicit. And you're going to the floor. You're the top Republican in the United States Senate. You go to the floor to say great things about the woman the president just fired. We heard earlier, in the, before we got to the president, from Senator Cornyn from Texas on the ballot next year saying, Ooh, what are we doing here, Mr. President? I don't know your rationale. Chuck Grassley saying you're running out of the, pe running out of the department to people who are trying to help you. Uh, what is the mood in the president's own party on Capitol Hill? Yeah, I think, you know, it's important here whether the president was totally looped in on what is being shopped around or not. We have seen senior Republicans raise alarm publicly. And in the past recently, when they've kind of done that, like with the health care, um, he, the president backs off a little bit. And so maybe that's kind of what we're seeing here today, too. But yeah, I mean, senior Republicans, Cornyn even yesterday called what's happening at DHS a mess, which is, you know, that's a pretty big deal coming from a senior member of Senate leadership who is an ally of the president who is on the ballot next year. You know, I mean, they're not willing, I mean, they're willing to criticize him a little bit here. And, in, in, you know, 
kind of a roundabout way. They, they see the same behavior that they think got them killed in the suburbs last year. Mm -hmm. They think cost them the House last year. The president's yeah. argument is, I wasn't on the ballot last year. I will be next year. This is all good. But a lot of Republicans are very skeptical about right. that. Right. I mean, we all remember the caravan. And the president really right. pushed that messaging hard that there was this caravan of uh, of migrants coming and they were going to storm the, the border. And when you talk to voters, some Republican voters would say, look, they're already here. I don't know what you're reporting, but, you know, they really bought that messaging and it resonated with them. But the problem is in these suburban districts, these affluent suburban districts, concerns about the president's temperament, about his tone, about this, his style outweighed any fears people may have about immigration. And, you know, a presidential race plays out differently. You can see why the president wants to energize his base uh, in this moment. But, you know, those those swing states and those swing voters are crucially important. And the question for the base is, will he follow through? And so we'll see. Very interesting today. We'll continue to track what's happening. There's a lot of questions about the White House policy.